welcome to this online arbitrage deals video. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today, I just wanted to give you a little bit of advice uh, which will hopefully go a long way. Uh, this, I would say, is probably aimed more at uh, beginners. Um, so anyone that's just started with Amazon and has potentially been doing it for up to a couple of months. Um, the main theme of this video is me basically telling you to try alternate um, slash more methods uh, in your Amazon business. So I'm going to break this down a little bit. When it comes to sourcing, for example, and this is going to be uh, the main avenue I'm going to go down. When it comes to sourcing, as we know, some days will be great days for sourcing. Some days will be all right. And some days uh, we might not find very much at all. On those days, it's really important to just carry on, to keep going. Um, just because there is a not so great sourcing day doesn't mean that Amazon isn't meant for you or you suck up what you're doing. It just means that it was a day that wasn't so great for sourcing. But that's not to say that you're going to continue to have those. And sure, it might be that you have a couple of sessions in a row that end up like that. But trust me, that is relatively normal. That's how the cookie crumbles. Not every single session is going to be um, super, super, super fruitful with loads of gold products that you found. But you will have those sessions. You will have those sessions. And you will have sessions where, you know, you, you, you it just goes okay. And that's still good. Every Amazon seller faces the same sorts of things in, in regards to sourcing. But what we can do to potentially help ourselves is to try alternate methods, to try more methods to help us out. So standard sourcing, however it is that you do that, whether that's through retail arbitrage or online arbitrage, finding the products from the retailer and then obviously checking them out on Amazon, flipping them if you can. Um, if you're doing retail arbitrage, Try some online arbitrage as well. You can do some RA while the stores are open and then when you get home and they're closed, do a little bit of OA, see what you find. And that's the beauty of Amazon, the fact that you can uh, do multiple methods at the same time. Um, but if you're finding that standard sourcing, uh, doing it that way, it just, something feels a little bit amiss. And this is the sort of thing that you would feel in your gut. This is the instincts that you'll have. Uh, as a person, as a seller. If you feel that, you know, maybe there's something else I could be doing, something else that may potentially help me more, then try other sourcing methods. So try reverse sourcing, where you find products on Amazon first, and if you have BuyBot Pro, it'll, this will get, uh, this will be made a hundred times easier, because when you search anything up on Amazon and you get all of the search results, BuyBot Pro will pop up with a little quick look box, which basically tells you uh, the BSR and the uh, the competition on those listings. That way you get a, a brief but key understanding of that item without having to do a full blown analysis. So you can literally cherry pick some things that stand out to you from the search page and because it's already passed um, some key criteria just based on what you can see there in terms of the BSR level, the competitions and so forth, um, it means that it saves you a bit of time with, with doing a full-blown analysis. You'll know what works out on Amazon already. And then it, uh, even with BuyBot Pro, for example, there's little links to Google whereby it'll look up the item for you. So you can very quickly get from the uh, Amazon search page through to that exact product Looking it up on Google, as you know, you get all of the results at the top. So you just swipe along and see where you can get it for a good price. So that can not only potentially speed up the sourcing process, but doing it that way may feel better for you. And I don't know if it's just based on what I've personally seen, but I feel like reverse sourcing is a little bit of an unsung hero. I don't think it's talked about enough, but I personally think it is such a fantastic way to source doing it like that, finding out if it works out on Amazon to start with, to even know if it's even worth looking for it in a retailer. Because you can spend so much time looking for certain products and then you check it out on Amazon and realize, oh, well, it, you know, it does all right here and there, but overall it's just not really gonna work. Um, whereas if you do it the other way around, then you can easily identify, especially with the help of Buy What Pro, what 
um, is more likely to work and then obviously find it from the retailer. What you can also try is a bit of storefront stalking. So this is where you um, find listings that you're interested in. So cherry pick some from the search page, whatever it is that you um, can think of that you might want to go ahead with. And you check out your competitors on the listing. So you can look at other items that they're selling. And again, this is something that is majorly enhanced if you have Biobot Pro, if you have a deal analysis tool. Um, but I know 100% for a fact that this is what you can get through using Biobot Pro. You get the Quitlet box, um, as I briefly explained earlier, underneath every single item that that seller has. And you get what's called the manual sourcing uh, panel, which is basically a panel that appears to the side of your screen, which gives you a bit more information about each of the products. Um, and then if you were to click on a button for each one, you can do a full blown analysis through Biobot Pro. But only when you're on a seller's storefront on that panel, there's a tab called store details. If you click on that, you can see a bit more info about the seller so you get better understanding. And what you can also see are the top brands that that seller sells and the top categories that they sell in. You can also see the product uh, the product count for each brand for each category and that can really really help you out there's a reason why that seller's gone for those products and why their product counts are what they are and so in a sense a portion of that work is already done for you of course don't take their word for it we still need to do our own analysis to make sure that the products work out for us that's really important because every single seller's criteria and what they look for is going to be completely different also the availability is going to be different for each seller as well um it might be that they had a, a special uh, sort of like coupon code or something that, you know, just for them, some kind of like discount that only they, you know, could have access to. So it's still really important that we check for ourselves, we source, but in a sense, a portion of the work has already been done for us. There's a reason why they've gone for that item and it can really help us out and inspire us with uh, brands that we can look into, uh, categories that we could check out as well. So if we saw, you know, that they have quite a high product count in a certain brand, that tells us, you know, some there's there's got to be something going on with this brand in order for the product count to be so high. Is it that that brand's having a sale on a number of their items and such? And so that's what we could look into. That's a great lead. Uh, maybe it was a brand that we weren't even aware that we could sell. Maybe we were under the impression that it might have IP issues. And of course, still double check, do your analysis, but they can let us know about brands that we might not have been aware of um, or categories that we didn't think that, uh, we, you know, we didn't think about when we were thinking of what, you know, what categories we're going to sell in. So that can really help us out with inspiration, of course. Through doing storefront stalking, in a sense, you've also done a bit of reverse sourcing as well. So you find the products first and then you then you source them, then you get them from the retailer. So you can integrate storefront stalking into what you do. Uh, you can take advantage of deal sheet software, so like onlinearbitragedeals.com, whereby deal leads are provided to you. And even from the leads that you get, not only will they be useful in themselves, but that could potentially lead you on to other products that are similar that you could also take advantage of. So maybe things of the same brand, uh, maybe from the same retailer and so forth, uh, that can really help you out. Or you can use uh, sourcing software like Sellability. Um, so seller and then Billity, Sellability. Uh, that's basically going to enhance your sourcing process. So in that software, there's a database of 300 and 48 retailers, all well-known uh, names, no rinky-dink backstreet retailers that you never heard of, but, you know, places like uh, like b and uh, Argos, um, Forbidden Planet, HMV, there's all sorts of retailers in there. And all you do is basically just click the retailers that you're interested in. Whenever you're gonna go do some sourcing, it will scrape those sites for profitable deals. And then all you do is apply your own personal criteria to make sure it fits with what you're looking for and cherry pick the ones that work out best for your business. So you could enhance sourcing that way through the use of software like sellability. But ultimately, try alternate and try more methods to help your sourcing. If you're just doing one, if you're just doing standard sourcing, and you have that feeling of, you know, I could potentially be doing something else, but I'm not sure what, you know, how can I enhance my sourcing? You know, how can I make this better? How can I uh, have less of those, you know, bad days and so forth? Try using alternate methods, try using more methods, implement different things into what you do and see what works out best for you. It might be that you're doing standard sourcing, but once you try reverse sourcing, it fits like a glove for you and it's the method that you primarily use when sourcing. And, you know, when something feels more comfortable like that, 
we're bound to have a bit more success with it. So ultimately, as I say, and as I've said a few times in this video, try alternate methods, try more methods, see what works out well for you. And the, the great part about everything that I've talked about is that um, it's not a case of, oh, I need to, you know, just do reverse sourcing and that's it. Implement some storefront stalking into that as well. It fits beautifully together. Um, you know, use use software like Sellability um, and from the leads that you get there, again, it can lead you on to other things. And yeah, like try more methods, try, try other things. Um, you don't know unless you try. And that's quite an old saying, but it's very, very relevant, particularly with what I'm talking about in this video. Uh, so hopefully that's given you some inspiration. Hopefully it's given you some useful advice that you can implement into your own business and see what works out best for you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.